it's just starting to get light here at the proving grounds too and i'm getting ready to climb up in the stand it's going to be a fun morning because we're doing something pretty exciting i've got a couple smoke bombs with me so stay tuned we're going to see what happens Cool air sinks. Remember that, cool air sinks. And let me explain what you just saw, all right? So this is a pretty steep slope right here. This is a food plot. And then back behind me is a little hardwood runner. And there's actually another little food plot behind us and a creek. That creek is the lowest point. This valley runs primarily north and south. So imagine that smoke was our scent. You saw it kind of go right along the edge of this food plot. It kind of hit the trees and hung up and it just sucked straight away. That's exactly what our scent would be doing right now. It's just carrying straight down. That cool air is coming down off the mountain. It's going to that lowest point. You know, I'm thinking as a bow hunter, I'm sitting in this tree. I'm like, anything that comes out from the north here steps right out, you know, my scent's off their trail 20, 30 yards, they're gonna be within bow range. But let's see what happens once that sun comes up over the mountain, like I'm hunting a little later in the day, maybe eight, nine o'clock. Let's see what our scent's doing once that sun comes up over the mountain. All right, it's a couple hours here, kind of mimicking, you know, sitting in the stand and whatnot. The sun has come up over the mountain it's very sunny out in this food plot that we would be hunting if we were hunting this stand. And we're gonna climb back in and see what the thermals are doing. Now that that sun is up, I'm gonna suspect the air is gonna be moving a little different. Let's see what happens. Just a couple hours after our first test this morning, simulating, hey, sitting here in the stand for a couple hours, hoping the deer walks out into bow range. And I gotta tell you, it was pretty obvious what was happening. It was scary because first thing this morning, that wind, the thermals, that cool air was sinking and it was going straight down that way. Now, almost 180 degree change, it was going right up the valley. And actually, you may have noticed there were a couple swirls in that smoke and it actually did kind of a 360 all the way around. It went north, went back to the south, and then went back around to the north. Warm air rises. And this time in the morning, as that sun comes up over the mountain, it's starting to heat air up. And that's exactly what happens. We get that churning of cold air and warm air. And that wind just wants to swirl. Just like what we saw, if our scent was swirling like that smoke, which it is, as we're respirating, just sitting here all morning waiting for a deer, it's just swirling around and we're creating a sink cone around us. So cool air sinks, warm air rises. When those two meet, it's churning just like that. So let's just break this hunting uh, scenario down, this location down just a little bit tree stand down here in the bottom all right you're thinking wow that'd be a great place to hunt but when that wind and those thermals start churning like that it is tough to get within bow range of a deer this stand was actually set up more for a rifle stand but here's a lesson for you right here we are down here on the bottom of this slope right up the ridge here there's a redneck blind and grant hunted that redneck trailer blind last season and saw a pile of deer in this field. Now, one thing we noticed mid morning, most of those deer were cutting right along this slope. Wouldn't you know it, 
that's exactly where those thermals are starting to churn as that sun comes up. That way, that wind is always hitting them in the nose. They, they have really good scent, you know, around them. So it's kind of like their scent protection. They know what's ahead of them, they know what's above them, what's down below them. They're getting a lot of churning scent coming in. So being a prey species, they wanna know what's around. So being up the slope in that redneck blind, concealing that scent, that allowed Grant to see a pile of deer that morning. And this is just a great illustration of how deer use those thermals to detect predators or hunters and as a prey species and how hunters as predators, we need to be conscious of how our scent is working through the area. Depending on how our setup is, whether we're bow hunting, firearm hunting, where is our scent going? And how is it moving throughout the time that we're hunting? Once those thermals change a lot of times, we may hunt down here very early where we know those thermals are pulling one way, carrying our scent. But once we start feeling that wind start to shift and swirl, we're usually climbing down. That may mean some shorter hunts, but we're saving those hunting locations for when the conditions are right, another day. As soon as we were done testing down in that valley, we hopped in the tracker and boogied up to the top of the hill and I climbed up a tree stand on top of a ridge where that wind was more consistent. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. This is just a great example of how air is traveling in a close campy forest. Now today, right now, Moultrie Mobile app on the weather says it's about a 10 mile an hour northwest wind. Northwest is cutting me just like this. Actually, this stand's set up perfectly for a northwest wind. Well, you notice on those smoke bombs that the wind was pretty consistent, blowing back this way. But when that wind let up, you saw that smoke start going straight up and then it started switching back, you know, back to my left here. And then once that wind got a little more consistent and started going through there, started pushing through again. That's just a great example, great illustration of why we hunt the ridge tops. This is up on top of a ridge where that wind is more consistent. We didn't see near the swirling as we did down in the valley, down along the, the bottom of the food plot where that wind was swirling. It's 10, 15 minutes from when we just tested down there at the valley and the wind is much more consistent here. So this is why we like to hunt the ridge tops most of the time because that wind is consistent. With thermals, it makes it tough. You may have got caught up in watching that smoke right at my feet blow up and get in my face and you're probably chuckling at that, but I'll tell you, I was turning not to get the smoke out of my face, but to look and see what that smoke was doing back behind me. If you watch carefully, you'll notice that smoke was dispersing and it was getting wider and wider. And we call that our scent cone, if you will. So the further it gets away from the tree, it's dispersing this way and that way, further and further. And as it goes, it's hitting trees, it's swirling even more, dropping up and down. And we often talk about entering, hunting, and exiting without alerting deer. And part of that hunting strategy is understanding where our scent is going, when we're walking in and while we're hunting and exiting. And that's not only just what our scent is doing right here at the tree, but maybe what it's doing 100 yards away. That cone's getting pretty big, starts covering a big area. If you suspect those deer are coming maybe right on the edge, there's a good chance that wind may swirl just a little bit and get just a little scent to that deer. It may not blow and alert you that it smells you, but I can guarantee if it swirls like that and you suspect that deer's back in there, it's probably not showing up. 
and you just think, man, it's slow and you never knew you were alerting deer. So make sure you consider what your scent is doing, you know, past the tree that you're hunting in. The more you start to understand and thinking about thermals and applying it to your hunting strategy, you're probably gonna be taking home a bit more meat for the freezer. You know, think elk, deer, even predators, raccoons, coyotes, they're all living by their nose, whether they're trying to avoid predators like us as hunters or looking for a meal like raccoons and coyotes, you know, nose to the ground every night looking for something. If you understand thermals, you're gonna up your chances to get within range of a, a deer or an elk and even increase your trapping odds as you play that thermal game, you know, letting that scent blow across where a predator may be running to take them to your trap. Thermals are an important skill to have when you're out enjoying creation. Hey, I hope you take time this week, slow down, get outside, maybe start studying the terrain where you're hunting this fall, or start considering thermals, or you know how you're gonna enter and exit certain stand or blind locations. But no matter what, make sure you slow down and enjoy creation. But more importantly, listen to the creator and the purpose he has for your life. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.